How's everyone doing today? Great. Happy birthday! Yay. <laughs> today is Pentecost, the birthday of the church, where we'll hear about the story of how the Holy Spirit worked to birth the church through the first disciples, but that's later on in the service. Let's begin. First of all, my name is Tim Clifford. Uh, I'm the youth director here at Crowley First United Methodist Church, and it is my honor, it is my pleasure, it is my blessing to welcome each of you here to our congregation in the name of Jesus Christ. And I want you to know that no matter what kind of week you've had, whether it's been the best week or the worst week or the most in-between week, no matter where you're coming from today, I want you to know that in the name of Jesus Christ, you are welcome here at Crowley First UMC, and we are glad to have you here. We would love to know that you joined us today. You can do that. You can let us know that by filling out a Connect card that are uh, at the back of the sanctuary or online. We have those posted in the comments as well for you to fill out. My one announcement today, and Pastor Amy will be up here with a couple other announcements in a bit, but my one announcement today is to um, let you guys know about how fun, how much fun I got to have last week with our youth. So I've been announcing for a couple weeks our big youth week kickoff week of the summer, and last week we got to do a ton of fun things. We had an event every day. I am very tired, um, but it was... <laughs> It was really such a blessing to get to be here, to get to love on our kids, to get to build some relationships with our students, and to get to deepen some relationships that I've already had. And it was a real joy, and I want to thank you for what you do to make uh, my ministry here possible. And I'd also like to continue to announce our mission trip in July, July 10th through the 16th. Um, if you know of a youth who might be interested in coming, even just the slightest bit, send them my way. Help me get in touch with them. Um, some of the deadlines for deposits and signing up are coming up here in the next couple of weeks. So we want to get our students in and ready to go and excited for the work that we're going to get to do together in July. Pastor Amy, you want to? Oh, I forgot the rest. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. I thought I would let him exercise the flexibility of the Holy Spirit. Good job. Good job. He is one of our candidates for ministry, and he does an exceptional job. So that was another exercise in trust. Awesome job, Tim. Let's give him a hand. We welcome you today, and some of you are in red, some of you aren't, and that's okay because it's Pente Pente Pentecost, it's Pentecost, and um, the Spirit is with you whether you're in red or not. Um, Tim talked to you about Youth Week, but I wanted to let you know that we have Messy Church this Wednesday at 6 o'clock, and then we'll be taking a break for Vacation Bible School, so we would really need your help this Wednesday at 6 o'clock. Let me say that again. What time? This Wednesday at 6 o'clock. We would love for you to join us. Um, I understand there's not choir this week. So choir members, we would love for you to join us and see what it's like. We can have a meal, help with crafts. Connie is in the back. Wave your hand. Connie Smith. You can talk to her if you'd like to help us and get connected. And um, additionally, if you have been looking at our e-news or watching Facebook, um, we are starting a Psalms reading challenge. We'll be reading the book of Psalms for the summer. We started June 1st. And you can still catch up. We encourage you to read a psalm in the morning and a psalm at night and work your way through the book of Psalms. We'll be focusing on that for June and July, and we'll start preaching on that next week. So jump in if you, if you haven't already started. And then we also invite you to, um, to just be in prayer. Um, we're excited to share that at the end of the month, we will have our district superintendent, the Reverend Dr. Philip Rhodes, here to give the word. So that'll be the end of June. Go ahead and mark it on your calendars now and be in prayer for all the wonderful things that God is doing in the life of our congregation. Let us pray together. 
gracious and loving God, pour your spirit out upon us, fill us up, help us to stretch out our hands today and to fill you with us. May we not miss a moment of your presence. In your name we pray, come Holy Spirit, amen. Please join me in the call to worship. Ah. Come, Holy Spirit, ignite our hearts with joy and confidence. For God God has has done done wondrous things things for us. us. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us with the power of the rushing wind that we may faithfully serve you in all that we do. For Christ Christ has has called called each of us and blessed us. Come, Holy Spirit, be with us today. Help us to boldly proclaim, Christ is risen. Amen. Would you stand as we sing together?
As we come now into our time of prayer, I remind you we do prayer congregationally here at Crowley First UMC, and so that means that here in a moment I'll leave some space where we can lift up uh, whatever you want to bring before this community and before God in prayer this morning. That can be concerns, it can be joys. After each concern, we'll say, Lord, hear our prayers, and after each joy, we'll say, thank you, God, or praise God, whatever feels right in the moment. So we'll start with some in the back with Ashton. Good morning. We have a joy of thanksgiving and a prayer of thanksgiving this morning for Louise Mixon, as it is her birthday and she has turned 92. So let's say thank you, God. Thank you, God. Mm -hmm. We also have joys of praise from Bonnie Wilborn for Tim and the youth uh, who provide youth helpers, thank you, uh, who provided a week of summer fun and fellowship to kick off summer 2022. What a blessing you all are. Thank you. Let's say praise God for the work that we did this week. Praise Praise God. God. And we have another prayer of thanks for the youth that God has entrusted FUMC Crowley to minister to. Praise Praise God. God. Praise God. Prayers for Butch and Jeanette. Prayers for Butch and Jeanette. Lord, hear our prayers. And continued prayers for Steve Fox. Lord, hear our prayers. Brad. Prayers for my granddad, Bill Harris. Uh, he has COVID and he is overnight. Prayers for. He is stubborn and corrosion, so he'll probably be fine. He's just that stubborn, but please pray for him. Prayers for Bill Harris dealing with COVID. He's over 90, so. Lord, hear our prayers. Steve Corn. For Steve Corn? Steve prayers for Steve Corn. Lord, hear our prayers. Uh, my sister, Tammy, uh, is in the ER right now. So for Tammy in the ER right now. Lord, hear our prayers. Prayers for Van and Loween. Lord, hear our prayers. Yeah, Karina. So, so praise of Thanksgiving for the Spirit Moves trip, end of the year trip that went well and everybody was safe and had a lot of funds. So let's say praise God. Praise, praise God. God. Ashton. We have one just come in from Rick Mixon, who is saying prayers of thanks to God for his mom. Let's say praise God. Praise God. For John Birch. Lord, hear our prayers. Let's go to God now in prayer. God of light and breath, we thank you for this day, for the chance to come here to this space seeking an encounter with you. And we are grateful, God, for the many ways you have blessed us, both big and small. And we lift our gratitude to you. And we ask, God, that you would use our gratitude to shape us further into builders of your kingdom here on earth. 
God, you have set in our hearts a flickering flame like a candle that glows softly. And this morning, O oh Spirit, we ask that you would not let that flame be snuffed out. For there are many things in our lives that seem bent on snuffing out our flame. Today we lift those things to you. We lift those concerns that have been spoken aloud in this community, as well as those that have been left unsaid. We ask that you, O oh healer, would be present in the midst of these things, that you would bring healing, strength, peace, and even joy in the midst of our brokenness. We know, God, that you are always present, that you are always offering these things to us, even in the hardest moments of our lives. And so we also ask that you would empower us to look for your presence, especially in the places where we least expect to find it. And on this day, on Pentecost, O oh God, we ask that you would send your Holy Spirit among us, that the flame which flickers so softly in our hearts would be ignited, would be expanded into a roaring fire which burns for love, mercy, and justice. That that fire would shape us into builders of your kingdom, into disciples of you, O oh God. That you would make our hearts burn for your people, that you would set our souls on fire for your work in our broken and hurt world. We pray these things by the power of your Holy Spirit and in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand and join me saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I am grateful for the privilege to be able to talk to you about the offering this morning as the representative for our wonderful music ministry, and we do have a wonderful ministry of music. And it's not because of me. It's because of every single one of these people that participate. And with our handbells and when the children sing, we are grateful. It is the easiest job that I've ever had in my life because these people sing to the Lord and that is what it's all about. I'm so glad we're celebrating Pentecost this morning because that Holy Spirit that God gave to us is what makes music touch our hearts. When you feel that tug in your heart because of something they've sung or something that we're singing together as a um, hymn or whatever we may be doing, when you feel that tug, that's the Holy Spirit, and we are indeed grateful for that. Um, we're grateful today that we have a church like we have that will celebrate Pentecost, and I want to encourage you, as you have been doing all along, to continue to give your tithes and offerings to the church. You can do that online, and I should have that um, address uh, memorized, but I do not. So uh, it's Crowley do it's slash donate. I know that much. Prowleyumc.com 
slash donate. Or we have our offering box in the back, and you just may simply put it in there as you leave today. We are grateful, and I pray that you will pray with me right now as we pray over this offering. God, thank you so much for coming to us in such a holy way. Thank you for music that touches our hearts and for the spoken word that Amy brings week after week. God, we thank you for your touch and your hand upon this congregation, and we pray that you will open our hearts to give generously to all the work that you have to do. For it's in your name we pray, amen. amen. And the children may come down. All right, kids, come on down. Hi, everyone. It's good to see you. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Yay. Everybody pick out a hat. Pick out a hat. Which hat do you want? <laughs> All right. Anybody else? There's some over here. Which hat do you want? Emily, which hat do you want? Oh. Hmm. <laughs> Want to try this one? All right, everybody, got your hats on? Here, let me help you. Come here. You got it? No. Yeah. All right. Okay. So... Some of you are probably wondering, why are we in hats? What are we doing? Why are a lot of people in How many of you are wondering that? Well, what do you, what do you think the answer is? It's Jesus. It's the church's birthday. It's the church's birthday. Do you all have a birthday at some point, some year? Yes. Yeah. Some part of the year, we all have a birthday, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and what do you do on your birthday? You celebrate. We celebrate and we thank God that we have been in the world and we give thanks, right? So you are correct. It is the birthday of the church. The church was born when Jesus was born, but the Pentecost day was when the Holy Spirit came down and poured out on all of us. The church cannot be the church without the power of the Holy Spirit. We can't do it by ourselves. The Holy Spirit gives us strength and helps us to know what to do and how to live like Jesus and helps us be brave to talk to people and tell them about Jesus. So the church was born when the Holy Spirit poured out upon all of you. And that's when the church was born, so we celebrate the birthday of the church. And I want you to help me do that because everyone is celebrating the birthday of the church today. Not just us, y'all are in the cool hats, but everybody is celebrating the birthday of the church. So I am going to light these candles, okay? Don't come over until the candles are lit, all right? And then we're going to sing together happy birthday to the church. And then if um, someone would help me blow it out, or all of you could blow it out. We'll get it out somehow. Um, at the end, after that, when we're done, if you want to go outside to the Welcome Center or the nursery, we're going to let you eat cupcakes and cake to celebrate. How does that sound? And then afterwards, because we like to share if there are any left, they'll be out on the tables for other people to eat after the service, too. How does that sound? Good. So are you, all, are you all thankful that the church was born? Raise your hand if you're thankful that the church was born. I'm thankful because that means I got to know all of you and, and we get to go and love people like Jesus and heal the sick and sing songs together and share the word of God. All because why? The Holy Spirit came down and gave us the ability to do so and that is the birthday of the church. So let me light these candles. There's not enough candles for how old the church is, but we put as many on the cake as we could. Maybe we need one person. We need one person? Yeah, the candles. We need 
Okay. I think everybody can figure out a way to get it out. We just, okay, lots and lots of candles, but this is still not as many candles as it is for how long the church has been around. The church is very old, but very wonderful, and it's going to go on for a long time too, because Jesus Christ is the one who leads us. Okay, let's sing together. Come on. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to the church. Happy birthday to you. Yay. All right, let's all stand like this and kind of blow together. Don't get too close, okay? One, two, step back, step back, step back. One, two, three. Yeah. Yay! Good job, everyone. All right, so go on out with Miss Leona and have some sugar. <laughs> All right, bye bye, everyone. Thank you. Here you go. Here we go. Okay. That was cool. Okay, will you please join me in the prayer for illumination? Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you have to say to us today. Amen. Amen. All right. So, it is Pentecost. And it is the birthday of the church and also, as we heard, Louise Mixon's birthday of the church. So, can we, Melanie, can we get a one more, a, a song for Louise? The Holy Spirit is leading me. Birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, dear Louise, happy birthday to you. Yay! We are glad you could join us on your birthday. It's always good to celebrate and be in the house of the Lord, especially on Pentecost. This day in which the Holy Spirit knows no bounds. That's always the case. But this is the day that we like to remind ourselves of it, especially on Pentecost. So as we begin, I invite you to hear the word of God. The first part will be read by our youth. And it comes to us from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 41. They'll be reading the first part of the video the first part of the scripture in their video. When Pentecost Day arrived, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound from heaven, like the howling of a fierce wind, filled the entire house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be individual flames of fire alighting on each one of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. There were pious Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. When they heard this sound, the crowd gathered, they were mystified because everyone heard them speaking in their native languages. They were surprised and amazed, saying, Look, aren't all the people who are speaking Galileans, every one of them? How then can each of us hear them speaking in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, as well as residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the regions of Libya bordering Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the mighty works of God in our own languages. They were all surprised and bewildered. Some asked each other, what does this mean? Others jeered at them, saying they are full of new wine. Peter stood with the other eleven apostles. He raised his voice and he declared, 
Judeans and everyone living in Jerusalem know this. Listen carefully to my words. These people aren't drunk as you suspect. After all, it's only nine o'clock in the morning. Ray, rather, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young will see visions, your elders will dream dreams. Even upon my servants, men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will cause wonders to occur in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and a cloud of smoke. The sun will be changed into darkness and the moon will be changed into blood before the great and spectacular day of the Lord comes. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Fellow Israelites, listen to these words. Jesus, the Nazarene, was a man whose credentials God proved to you through miracles, wonders, and signs, which God performed through him among you. You yourselves know this. In accordance with God's established plan and foreknowledge, he was betrayed. You, with the help of wicked men, had Jesus killed by nailing him to a cross. God raised him up. God freed him from death's dreadful grip, since it was impossible for death to hang on to him. David says about him, I foresaw that the Lord was always with me, because he is at my right hand. I won't be shaken. Therefore, my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my body will live in hope because you won't abandon me to the grave, nor permit your Holy One to experience decay. You have shown me the paths of life. Your presence will fill me with happiness. Brothers and sisters, I can speak confidently about the patriarch David. He died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this very day. Because he was a prophet, he knew that God promised him with a solemn pledge to seat one of his descendants on his throne. Having seen this beforehand, David spoke about the resurrection of Christ, that he wasn't abandoned to the grave, nor did his body experience decay. This Jesus God raised up. We are all witnesses to that fact. He was exalted to God's right side and received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit. He poured out his spirit and you are seeing and hearing the results of him having done so. David didn't ascend into heaven. Yet he says, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right side until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all of Israel know beyond question that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. When the crowd heard this, they were deeply troubled. They said to Peter and the other apostles, brothers, what should we do? Peter replied, change your hearts and lives. Each of you must be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins. Then you will see, receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is for you, your children and all who are far away, as many as the Lord our God invites. With many other words, he testified to them and encouraged them, saying, be saved from this perverse generation. Those who accepted Peter's message were baptized. God brought about 3,000 people into the community on that day. Let me say that again. God brought about 3,000 people into the community on that day. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on us now. It's already here, but pour it out even more. Cover us from head to toe, O oh God. Let us not 
miss your presence. If there is someone here today who feels they have never encountered the Holy Spirit, then God, break through to them. Help them to feel your power. Help them to experience your love. Give us all the experience of your Holy Spirit warming our hearts and filling our souls. Oh God, we desire to meet with you today. I desire to step out of the way to abandon any agenda I might have had and give myself over to you so that I can be your vessel so that your children can hear from you. So God, come, come and rest on us. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. So I have to laugh when I think of Pentecost because we, we hear that they were all gathered in one place, right? And then what happened? Fire came down on their heads. Is that something any of you have experienced? I have. I see some weird looks. Not in the way that it happened in the book of Acts. But several years ago, I was reminded of this this morning, actually. This wasn't in the sermon, but now it is. Holy Spirit. I was serving at Acton United Methodist Church, and we were having communion like we will have today. And um, at the end, we turned around and covered up all the communion elements. And I turned around and covered up all the communion elements and leaned into the candle on the altar And it was like a flame and smoke. And my friend, Ben, who was serving with me, was like trying to help me pat out the flames in my hair. And I was in shock, just standing there kind of paralyzed, not completely understanding what was going on. And everyone else was going, and the choir, just like here, was right behind the altar. And so we had this... Acton was ahead of its time. They had a pretty strong live stream before the pandemic. And so um, you could watch the replay and see smoke (laughs) and bin. And not only that, but you could see the whole choir going, (gasps) it was crazy. It was crazy. I was okay. I was okay. But it was crazy. I only lost a little hair. And I can't read this story now, and I made sure to wear my hair up today, but I can't read this story now without thinking of how it must have been on that day. Flames getting really close to your head. I mean, if I was paralyzed and and it wasn't here, it was here, I can't imagine how they felt, especially because the flames came down on everyone around them right? It wasn't just one person with a flame everybody could run away from. They were all together in one place, says the scripture. So you're feeling paranoid about that flame, you turn this way and oh, your neighbor has a flame too. So imagine how it would have been on that day. And imagine in your mind what these people thought. I'm sure it was powerful, but I'm sure it was also a little confusing too, that's, that's how it is when the Holy Spirit encounters us. Sometimes we understand, sometimes we don't. Sometimes we're confused and we're like, is that really what the advocate, the Holy Spirit is trying to tell me to do? Sometimes we don't even know how God is going to work through the Holy Spirit and what it means until way later, way later. I remember as a youth, when I went on a mission trip, and he was the color group leader, he was a pastor down in Texas Annual Conference, and at the end of the week, he told me I, some crazy thing. He was like, I think you're going to be a pastor. And I just went, no. I, he's like, no, 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 I'm serious. I have a gift of telling when people are called to ministry, and I think you're going to be a pastor. And I just went, "Ah," you know, I was what, 15, 16? 
And I forgot about this until years later, we found our little albums. And this was before the internet allowed you to make albums. You actually took real pictures and cut them out and put them in an album. Do y'all remember those days? Yeah. Yeah. And I would make an album for every one of my mission trips. And that, I guess I was moved by that enough to take a picture with him and write in it, this is Pastor Whoever. I can't remember his name, but I wrote, and I found this later, he's crazy enough to think that I'm going to be a pastor one day. That was years ago. It took me a long time to get where I am. That's the Holy Spirit. We don't always know that the Holy Spirit is moving and talking to us at the time. But later, in hindsight, we look back and we go, oh, that was a prophetic word. That was God speaking over my life. And sometimes the Holy Spirit does this crazy thing. It asks us to wait. How many of you like waiting? You do not like waiting. (laughs) If you're watching online... If you're watching online, Bradley Alexander raised his hand and said he likes to wait. And anybody who knows Bradley is laughing. But you can wait by the power of the Holy Spirit. So I will tell you that I don't like waiting. You don't like waiting. We, we live in an Instapot society, right? I mean, you, you put it in, you throw in the stuff, you put the lid on, and how many minutes later you have a meal? 20 minutes, maybe, 30 minutes. We don't like the crock pot. I do, but a lot of people are like, nope, Instapot all the way. But, you know, the thing about the Instapot is it it gets the job done, but oftentimes the crock pot that has marinated and set and absorbed the flavors ends up being better, richer, tastier, more filling. And why? Because it marinated. It sat there. And when we allow the Holy Spirit to marinate, to sit in our lives, and we don't just try to go, oh, Instapot, we know what it's doing, then we realize later that we're probably better for it. And I say that because, you know, if you look at the scripture... We read the scripture about Pentecost, right? That's, that's the, that's chap, act, we read a whole chapter today, Acts chapter 2. And if you go backwards and you go to Acts chapter 1, um, we read these words. Before Jesus was taken up, working in the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus instructed the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he showed them that he was alive with many convincing proofs. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days, speaking to them about God's kingdom. While they were eating together, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised. He said, this is what you heard from me. John was baptized with water, but in only a few days, you will be baptized by the Holy Spirit. As a result, those who had gathered together asked Jesus, Lord, are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel now? Jesus replied, it isn't for you to know the times or the seasons that God has set by his own authority. Rather, you will receive power When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all of Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. After Jesus said these things, they were waiting. And as they were waiting, he lifted up, and the cloud took him out of their sight. Isn't that nice? Jesus is like, you, you are the people who will carry on the spirit of Easter. You are the people who will share and be the church. Wait. You know, some of them were ready to leave and go 
immediately and start proclaiming the news or do the mission project or jump straight in and launch a modern service the very next day. But Jesus said, remember? Wait. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for what the Father has promised. Sit in the slow cooker. Don't chase the Instapot. I'm working through the Holy Spirit. And I promise you, you will be richer. You will be richer if you wait. That's the part of the Holy Spirit that's not so much fun. You saw those kids waiting for that birthday cake, right? My daughter actually helped me buy all of that yesterday. We went shopping for the church's birthday. So she's been waiting an extra 24 hours. <laughs> and none of them, God bless them, none of them ran up and stuck their finger in the cake. <laughs> I was expecting it. You probably were too. Yes. <laughs> says, says the grandfather of three of them. Yes, we were all expecting, ah, cake! But they, I think, were touched by the Holy Spirit. And they waited. I mean, some of them had their dads holding them back. <laughs> but they waited, right? So if those little guys can wait for cake, we can wait and trust and believe and know that when we cannot see, the Holy Spirit is there and working. Think about it. Jesus died on the cross and then he was buried. And then what happened? We waited for three days. Three days we waited before they came and discovered the empty tomb. You couldn't see during that time. You didn't know what was going on, but God did. The Holy Spirit was working behind that big stone. And because of what happened on that day, we are here because of the resurrected Jesus. But for those three days, it looked like the end of the story, which is why we have to ask ourselves, when it seems like the end of the story, is it really the end? When it seems like the end of the story, is it really the end? I don't know about you, but I, I tend to have focused thinking and I can fixate on something and decide it's the end. I can easily convince myself that that's, that's it. It's done. It's hopeless. Throw in the towel. Anyone else like that? Okay, so a few people are like me. But you know, every time I do that, and maybe you've found this too, God has a way of, of, of surprising me, of, of somehow, even if it's tiny, doing something that makes me go, oh, okay, you're still there. Your Holy Spirit is working. Don't know everything yet. Doesn't make sense. Still questioning you, but God is not done. Have any of you been there before? That's what it means to allow the Holy Spirit to grow you and shape you and form you. It means you wait a lot. You wonder a lot. You sit by the sealed tomb and death looks like it has the last word, a lot. But our God says on the third day, Jesus will rise again. I'm not done. There is more. Even better because you sat in the slow cooker and didn't go straight to the Instapot. The Holy Spirit works in our lives, and sometimes it is an Instapot. And praise God when it is, because there's a lot less that we have to wait. But, but, quite often we find ourselves sitting in the slow cooker on low, not on high, on low, sitting there and sitting there and sitting there. And that's when we trust. And that's when we believe. We move over to Acts chapter 1, verse 12 through 14. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. 
When they entered the city, they went to the upstairs room where they were staying. Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, Alphaeus' son, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, James' son, all were united in their devotion to prayer, along with some women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. What did they do while they were waiting? Did you catch it? They prayed. That's right. They were united in prayer. That's what we do when we don't know what to do. That's what we do when we wait. Even if our prayer is, God, we don't understand. God, we're too tired to pray. We still reach out and say, God, I love you. I honor you. I believe in you. Help me. Thank you. You do all of those things. And then eventually, eventually, whatever's in the crock pot will be done. And we'll see God again. I promise you, you keep hanging on, but you pray. Prayer is action, even in a, if it looks like we're just sitting there, like the tomb with the big rock in front of it. The Holy Spirit works within us when we pray, when we wait, when we watch, when we, when we repent. The Holy Spirit works within And then, and then, when Pentecost Day arrived, they were all together in one place. That's how they came to be in one place, because they followed the words of Jesus, they waited, and they what? Prayed. Prayed. They were together, waiting on the Lord, and praying and believing that Jesus was going to bless them, the Holy Spirit was going to come down, Jesus was sending an advocate so they wouldn't have to do it alone, and they believed that it would happen. But until it did, they were faithful, waiting together and praying. That's how they came to be together. And then all of a sudden, suddenly a sound from the heaven like the howling of a fierce wind filled the entire house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be like individual flames of fire alighting on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. All that waiting paid off. The Holy Spirit came and man Did the Holy Spirit come? It overtook them. They spoke in languages that the Spirit gave them. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. We are filled with the Holy Spirit. I don't know if you believe it or not, but we are. We are filled with the Holy Spirit. God is at work in you. I promise. I see it in you every day. And I see it when I pray for the future of this church. I see so much that the Holy Spirit is going to do. Sometimes we have to wait, and it feels like we'll never get there. And we have way too many text messages about things we hope to do, but we're still waiting. But God is working. God is working. And we're going to see what the Holy Spirit does on God's time. What can we do while we wait? Pray. Come together, grow as disciples in Jesus Christ, take communion, be baptized. You know, we have this baptismal over here, and people think they have to schedule a baptism with me, but if the Holy Spirit puts it on your heart, you can come forward and we can baptize you on the spot anytime. Not only that, but... If you've been baptized already and you want to remember your baptism, we can do it. All you have to do is come down when we have the invitation or contact me if you're watching online and we will either set up a time or do it right now. Don't deny what the Holy Spirit is doing in you. The crowd heard all of these things And they were deeply troubled. They said to Peter and the other apostles, what should we do? Peter replied, 
Change your hearts and lives. Each one of you must be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is for you, your children, and for all who are far away, as many as the Lord our God invites. With many other words, he testified and encouraged them, saying, Be saved. Those who accepted Peter's message were baptized. And then it brings us back to our final word. Through the Holy Spirit that day, God brought about, do you remember? How many people? 3,000 people into the community on that day. God brought about 3,000 people into the community on that day. And it wasn't because... Um, it wasn't because Peter preached the most amazing sermon ever. It was because God worked in the people's hearts through the Holy Spirit, and they responded. God can do all things, and God will do all things. So be empowered, church. Don't be afraid. Be willing to wait. Be willing to trust. Be willing to build up and be willing to pray faithfully every day. Pray and ask our God of surprises to fill us and this church with the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, amen. amen. As we prepare for communion, I'm going to step away from the flames <laughs> and invite you to follow along on the screen on our order, or um, you can look in the hymnal, but we're only going to be doing the invitation from the hymnal today. The rest of it comes from the book of worship, and that will be our um, great Thanksgiving for Pentecost. So Tim's going to come lead us in the invitation, but before we do, I just want to get the instruction part of it out of the way now. Um, in just a little bit when we have communion, um, we will invite you to come and kneel at the altar. And as you do that, um, myself and Tim, we will come and serve you. Um, you can take a piece of bread and dip it in the cup. Or we have a basket with the little um, cups and wafers. If you prefer your own, you just have to indicate it to us. But that's how we're going to take communion. The ushers will direct you and you'll come as they do. You'll kneel. We will serve you and you're filled with... Feel free to stay and pray as long as the Spirit leads you. Um, this table is open to all by the Holy Spirit. So Tim, please lead us in communion. Friends, Christ our Lord invites to this his table all who love him, all who earnestly repent of their sin, and all who seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Church, hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. 
In the beginning, your spirit moved over the face of the waters. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love felled, your love remained steadfast. Your spirit came upon prophets and teachers, anointing them to speak your word. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. At his baptism in the Jordan, your spirit descended upon him and declared him your beloved son. With your spirit upon him, he turned away from the temptations of sin. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of the sight of the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised, to be with us always, baptizing us with the Holy Spirit and with fire as on the day of Pentecost. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus Christ took the bread, gave thanks to us and blessed it and broke it and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, the Lord Jesus took the cup and blessed it and said, this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for all of you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. On the day you raised him from the dead, Jesus was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread. And in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church has continued in the breaking of bread and sharing the cup. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts, in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. May they be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Jesus Christ, redeemed by his blood and empowered by the gifts of the Holy Spirit. By your spirit, make us one, one with Jesus Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, showing forth the fruit of the Spirit until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, we sense your Spirit and we thank you that this table is open to all. May we come today and be nourished by your body and your blood broken and shed on our behalf. May we be empowered by your Holy Spirit and may we come with open hands and open hearts. In your name we pray, amen. 
We invite you to come as the ushers direct you.
And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. If you enjoyed the bread, be sure to thank Jeanette Burns. She baked it fresh this morning. So definitely going to be fighting over this bread that's left over after the service. There's still plenty up here. Um, so as we conclude our service, I'm going to check. There's water in the baptismal. If anyone feels led to remember their baptism or to be baptized for the first time, I'm going to start making that a part of our invitation, okay? So it's going to always be an opportunity for you to do that. You can do that now. You can reach out to me online. If you want to join this church, become a part of a a body of faith that is truly, I believe, led by the Spirit, we would love to receive you as a member. You're welcome to come forth or reach out. And if you want to profess Jesus Christ for the first time or return to a relationship with the Lord, we wait for you with arms outstretched to respond however the Spirit is calling you today. Let's stand and sing together. send you forth with the words of the Wesleyan Covenant Prayer. I am no longer my own, but yours. Put me to what you will. Place me with whom you will. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be put to work for you or set aside for you, praised for you, or criticized for you. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and fully surrender all things to your glory and service. And now, O wonderful and holy God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, you are mine and I am yours. So be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it also be made in heaven. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.